Welcome back to the Charismatic Voice. I consider today a Christmas present to myself because we're going to be going deep into some hardcore fantasy nerddom. I recently discovered that Blind Guardian wrote a song about my favorite book series, The Stormlight Archives by Brandon Sanderson. And to make things even sweeter, right after this reaction analysis, I'm going to be interviewing Hanzi, the lead singer from Blind Guardian. And we're going to talk a ton about books and also about voice. But for this moment, let's listen to some music. <laughs> nice car. Man, his voice is just so well produced. The way he's able to sit in highs, add distortion or take distortion away, and it never sounds really pressed to me. It's very, very impressive. I think it'd be so easy for an instrument like his to try to overdrive or something where it would ride an edge that wasn't good. And instead I hear him taking such good care of his vocal folds. And, you know, I shouldn't should say just taking good care of the vocal folds. I think it's also taking good care of the entire vocal tract because we know that those harsh sounds aren't made with the two vocal folds if they're being done correctly, right? So he's taking care of all of the things along the way. I'm so excited to talk to him about that. He's like the poster child for taking good care of a voice, especially for a voice that sits so high. Okay, we're gonna go back to the beginning. Anybody surprised by that? Here we go. I love the art. to have a conversation with him about the Stormlight Archives. Okay, this is referencing one of the most epic parts in the first book. I, I brought uh, one of my most treasured possessions to uh, reaction analysis today. This is a leather bound version of The Way of Kings, which is the first book in there. And it is so so beautiful. I kickstarted this a long time ago. Anyhow, in this incredible book, which oh, like even has gold pages, like it's so gorgeous. Look at that artwork. Oh, anyhow, um, in this incredible book, there is this horrific battle scene that repeats several times. I'm not going to give away the details, um, but at one point, the lyrics say, we're heading straight into damnation for an unknown God. It needs a rebel heart, a pure soul. I'm sure that this is talking about the Jim Hearts that are uh, out on the plains and and these bridge runs. They're just the most horrific things in this fantasy world that's been set up for battle. And it's so cool that he's talking about this in a way that you don't even have to read the book to relate to the lyrics already. I love the way that Blind Guardian will take fantasy subjects and put them into songs in a way that you can just vibe with without necessarily knowing what the details of the exact circumstance are. So anyhow, he's talking about this book right here, right now, and it's incredible. And I get chills 
because it's so well written and his words are calling back to this and even the music is like that pounding run into the war. Anyhow, I can't give spoilers away, but it's an amazing, amazing battle scene a few different times and I feel that the music and the words are reflecting this so well. Okay. Speed metal is the music for running into war. That is that is the music. That always was the music. I didn't know it until now, but I now I now know it. Such a great example of really healthily produced distortion, harsh vocals with this beautiful high afterwards. That high, even though it sounds aggressive, I doubt that he's feeling pressure here. I don't think that there's um, very much toll or effort at all to make this sound, which is very aggressive sounding, but I don't think is aggressive in production. Back one more time. The extension of raging in there. He had a great line. I I think it's so remarkable how Hansi had these has these incredible lines. Um, and interspersed is fantastic percussive like diction. He knows how to really enunciate things so that we're getting the lyrics very clearly. He has to do this because their songs are so story driven. But at the same time, if you chop up all of the words too much, sometimes you lose the feeling of a sung line. We tend to attribute singing to things on vowels, things that are more sustained, whereas consonants tend to be pretty choppy, usually. Uh, and so it's really great to hear that really long line and then lyrics that are, are just getting a story across. Listen to how he uses the diphthong on raging rage. It doesn't use an H, I was wrong about the ha, but he does the diphthong raging. It's a really good use of a diphthong and using it to accent different pitches. Oh, I like the the raised half step at the end that um gives it a a major feeling. Nice, that's a good violent attack. <laughs> I just 
want to give another little note here on band and vocal longevity in particular. I I think that Hansi is one of the most impressive singers that I've heard as far as taking great care of his voice long term. And I think that I think I was reading the band was formed in 1984, I believe. So nearly nearly 40 years of professional singing, professional singing with harsh vocals, with lots of distortion, with lots of power and drive. That's the kind of thing that tears many singers apart. That's the kind of thing that, especially when it's done long-term like that, you tend to hear voices just suffer. Not only that, you have to account for aging in there. And when people age, their voices change. And especially when they get much, much older, the voices start to become a little more brittle, a little less flexible and fluid. And that can take such a toll. So I feel extremely impressed, even more so, hearing how well he's maintained his entire singing hole. It's just delightful. We're gonna talk lots about that. You should be proud. <laughs> nice, nice. Oh. oh, I really love his vocal production here. But in addition to that, I love, I think it's a guitar that I hear doubled with him. I think so. So effective. Really great choice of orchestration uh, instrumentation, I guess is the way I should call it when it's a metal band and not an orchestra. Instrumentation is great. I love it. I also love that little tiny slide off of Master, and it makes me think of Master of Puppets just a little bit. That doubling. Really nice. Mm, look at the way he raises his lips. He has some teeth in here. His sound is placed pretty far forward. Not there, but master. Ooh, is that an octave up high? An octave that one? That's really good. Wow, on the top end of that, it's. <sighs> That's some really high doubling. talk a little bit about his stance. He's very clearly staying nicely within his body for that support to have that sort of longevity and singing. You need to have good body connection and support of the voice so that all of your air doesn't just collapse on the way out. So you have a big whoosh that smacks into your vocal folds and causes you to crack or um, causes a lot of impact in the vocal folds and that can lead to things like vocal nodules. Anyhow, air control is very important. You probably know this, uh, but having your low body support can really help you to achieve great, great air control. His breath control spots. You can see right here a little bit. I've noticed a couple times watching this video, in live performance, it looks like he often is putting one leg up on something, just uh, popping it up on top of a monitor or on top of a box, a, uh, like a step, this kind of thing. This can actually help singers to get into their lower pelvic area, essentially, which is the very, very lowest um, that your breath support can come from. Uh, that in particular, I know for some singers can help with a pelvic tilt. Sometimes you're 
uh, especially if you have a sway back, your pelvis will tilt back a little bit and that can cut off access to um, those lower muscles that can help restrain the diaphragm on the way out. Also right here, he often is putting one foot forward. He has this sort of, looks like a very karate stance, like done in a kata. <laughs> Anyhow, um, that leaning forward often into one particular knee. I see tenors do that in opera all the time. I swear this is like a tenor stance. And that leaning into the ground like this, it can feel like you're pulling up energy from the sage. So yes, your lowest breath muscles really are going down to your pelvic floor. But for some singers, just thinking that low isn't as helpful as thinking about their entire breath going down into the stage or maybe pulling up energy from the stage. And that can be achieved through this stance where he's leaning into the stage. So just that image can be super helpful if you're a singer and you want to find lower breath support. I suggest trying both of these things we talked about out. that chorus. I dig it. It has a lot of heroism in it. Uh, I love the high moment on Hyde, I think. I, it has it has bravery in it as well, which are things that I all I think are all very well attributed to the way of kings in those battle scenes. Oh, go back. Wow, the harmony! Whoa, I just had so many fun thoughts sparked by that instrumental section. First of all, I wanna know, are the other band members also Stormlight Archive fans? When they write an instrumental solo, are they thinking about particular scenes? I need to know this. And uh, there's a group of uh, people in this called the Parshendi that have a certain exotic feel about them. And I wonder if they are considering that with some of the, the choices in there. It had um, some more exotic harmonies or just pitch choices in general. Uh, I thought it was really cool how it felt like there were different chapters in there. And in the battles, it also feels like there are distinct chapters of uh, bridge things. Again, ah, I don't want to give spoilers away. This is such an incredible book series. You should read it. Ah, this isn't even a sponsored video. I just really love this book series. Okay, anyhow, we're going to go back and then get into this one with That's exotic part. That's cool. Oh, oh, and another thought they sparked that I didn't mention before. What if this becomes a video game? Oh my gosh, the world is gonna be so amazing if that happens. That world is already amazing. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Oh, too much amazingness. Oh, hey, hey, look at that. That's exactly what I'm talking about, putting a foot up on a monitor. That's the thing that I was saying, it can help with that pelvis tilt. Um, just, it's it's really good, try it. You might even try sitting with your foot up on a chair, go a little bit higher, or even holding a knee up. That can work really well. Ooh. Wow, I love that. Again, that really long line. Was it one more stand? One more step. 
And then the way he says Bridgman every time it's talking about Kaladin, it's just, uh, who's an amazing, amazing character. I hear the way he says Bridgman, you can tell that there's a lot of emotion and understanding behind this character and his voice. <sighs> it's really good. <laughs> Oh man, that's that's talking about this critical moment where Kaladin essentially has to choose to keep on living. And I think that's so important. Um, there are several big, I'm going to call them mottos. Um, again, not to give spoilers away in this book, but... Uh, one of the big things that I really relate to is life before death, essentially choosing to live, uh, even sometimes when dying might seem like the easy way out or almost, I think, and if you're in a really dark, uh, dark place, sometimes it feels like the only choice, but choosing to live still and choosing to make your way through it, choosing to go through that journey and come out the other end, also choosing to protect life. Um, and choosing to, yeah, to just be a, a human that guards other human lives as well. <sighs> choosing to still be there. Anyhow, life before death. And he's talking about that in this verse, in this sort of critical moment. Hear the chasms calling. It's one more step your choice to make. <sighs> Love that high part. It's a really great ending. I like the way it's building level at a time, adding it a higher, higher, higher. And then at the end, it actually doesn't even wait for that anticipation anymore. It just slams it and slams it harder than you even think it's going to be slammed on those high notes. Woo. There one. Still there one. Two. And then it goes up a lot faster. Yeah, high harmonies. Man, this is a really great, held out, long, uh, tormented note, too. This is really playing into the torment, I think, of the character at that moment. Oh, oh one more time. That's a great build. It's a good enunciation, too. Oh my goodness, I don't know how we're going to keep this interview to a short amount of time because just in this one song, there was so much to talk about and we're going to spend a lot of time talking about both books and singing and how Hansi's just so dang good at it. So please join me in that interview. You can check out the link over here. I'll see you there soon.